Hello, podcast listeners. We know podcasts are a great way to catch up on a program that you may have missed on KSJE, and it's provided as a free service of this radio station. But you know, KSJE is now listener supported, and so while you enjoy this podcast, we hope that you'll also take some time to join KSJE. You become a member today. It's quite easy to do. Just go to our website at ksje.com slash support and pick the level of support that best matches your budget. Thanks again for listening. Here's your podcast. KSJE is supported by San Juan Regional Medical Center. The caregivers of San Juan Regional Medical Center are committed to bettering the quality of life, health, and care of individuals, families, and our communities. Life is their sacred trust. Better is their mission. Here is their home. San Juan Regional Medical Center, improving the health of the Four Corners since 1910. Good morning, everyone. I'm Scott Bicklin, and welcome to our Solutions from the Street program. Megan Cullop is off today because we made her work late last night at the Connie Mac World Series. So we're going to give her that for this morning, but we do miss Miss Megan from being here. Um, but we have a great program for you. This is our Solutions from the Street program, a program where we kind of look at challenges in our community and bring in guests to talk about some of the solutions to those challenges. And so um, my guest this morning on our program is Dr. Bob Underwood from San Juan Regional Medical Center. He is the Chief Medical Officer at the hospital. Uh, Dr. Underwood, good morning and welcome back to KSJE. Good morning, Scott. It's good to be on again. Nice to have you back. You're in the studio. You're not on the phone. You're not some disembodied photo that I I'm talking to absolutely, uh, <laughs> you know, and unfortunately, the, the this is the first time we were talking about it uh, before we started that I've been on. Then we're not talking about the impacts of COVID, so right. this is really refreshing. Unless you want to, great news. Let's um, let's talk I about still, something else. I still can because I still research. I know you can, <laughs> yes, sir. But uh, but it's nice to have you here to talk about this topic, which yes. is really exciting, and it fits into our format of our show, the Solutions yep. from the Street program. Right. When we talk about you know the. Um, limitations of primary care physicians in communities not just in San Juan County or New Mexico but all across the country and what has happened is San Juan Regional Medical Center has been awarded a pretty substantial grant to start a primary care physician residency program and that sounds very exciting sounds like it's a lot of work um, and may take some time, but I mean, I think that's kind of the light at the end of the tunnel, right? Uh, it absolutely is. I mean, this this aligns with the strategy of the organization. Um, and yes, you're exactly right. This is a big step in the right direction. It will be a long time coming to fruition. But the intent is that in most residency programs, especially those that are primary care, uh, the folks who finish that training stay where they did their training. And yes, we have a need for primary care providers right here in San Juan County in the Four Corners area. And so the long-term strategy is we will start to build that cadre right here, right here in Farmington, right at San Juan Regional Medical Center. Nice. And so yeah. this, this grant comes from the state, the, the HSD, HSD yep, yep. and uh, it is um, kind of a, a, I guess, just a get started grant type of thing. And so now the work begins to kind of develop this program. So what we will do is reapply for the grant every year. So mm -hmm. this one is the first year just to get it off the ground. And so that is bringing in the appropriate personnel reviewing the requirements for the various types of primary care specialties. That's why we only call it primary care. Right. Um, there are a couple of specialties that fit in the primary care uh, definition. Uh, most likely will be their family practice or internal medicine. But there are requirements you have to have, certain type of faculty members. They have to do certain things. Um, they have to provide a certain level of care in order to qualify for a training program. And okay. so that's our investigation, understanding what that curriculum really needs to be. Um, and bringing in who's going to be a medical director, needs to be a physician, 
and bringing in a coordinator because um, from what you've already heard, you can tell that there's a lot of pieces that need to be coordinated. Right. Uh, and that position is, is probably going to be even bigger than just the residency program. The reason I bring that up is we do a lot of training at our hospital already. Mm -hmm. This is really, and what we talked about at our strategy retreat last year is formalizing our educational programs uh, for practitioners, that's licensed independent practitioners, um, which includes PAs, nurse practitioners, uh, CRNAs, nurse anesthetists, and physicians in training, whether they're students or residents. This particular one is probably the biggest piece, the residency program. Uh, but we really want to formalize and, and consolidate how we do that training for all of the providers in our community. Nice. And so remind me and our audiences a little bit about how a residency kind of fits into the whole education of, <laughs> sure. a, potential, of a new doctor, right? Yep. Um, so uh, the, the way a physician is trained, you have to, of course, go to college, uh, generally do pretty well at college. And then after college, you go to medical school. And medical school is generally four years in and of itself. Two years of the call the basic sciences. If you've done science, you realize quickly that's not really basic science right. anymore. You're pretty right. advanced in anatomy, physiology, pharmacology, things like that. And then after your two years of sciences, then you do two years of clinical rotations. And those are your clinical years of medical school. And then sometime towards the end of your third year, beginning of your fourth, you decide what specialty you want to go in. I'm an emergency physician. Mm -hmm. And so from that, you choose residencies that you will apply for. And then you get accepted into the residency of your choice, hopefully. And from that, you do another three to seven years of training um, as a resident or a fellow um, before you're fully licensed and board certified within that specialty. Gotcha. And so this program would be that it four to a, seven year It would be a three year period? program three years. after medical school. I see. That's correct. And so the, and then with your hope that these folks, once they're done, would stay in the community and start up a, a practice. Uh, exactly. Either um, one of the many practices that we have in town um, or stay at San Juan Regional Medical Center. We have a number of practices that are part of San Juan Health Partners. Um, and so we have a, an innumerable opportunity uh, selections for primary care in our community. Um, as we talked about, it's a, it's a need, certainly here in the Four Corners area, but really nationally. And so, so with this residency program, is there a, a shortage of places where these students can go? And is there a competition, I guess, to try to attract these students to be a resident here rather than yes. over there? Uh, there certainly is. Uh, and that'll be part of developing this program is mm -hmm. to make it attractive for those medical school graduates to want to come here to do their training. We've already had an interest. I mean, there are there are are youth from our community who are currently somewhere in that pathway. They're either in college or they're in med school and they want to come back. And so they're very interested in right. us having a residency program. Um, I and I guess that's part, pardon me for interrupting, but I guess yeah. that's part of the whole idea of maybe trying to grow your own and yep. folks who grew up here who maybe have ties here who want to stay here you bet. to be able to be a resident here. I mean, that checks a lot of boxes for some folks. It, it, it does. Yeah, it really does. The other benefit and um, I have to explain this to folks. Um, for people who are unfamiliar with Farmington, we have one of the things that you want in your training is a high level of acuity. You want to see a lot of different disease processes. You want to, because that's how you learn. Right. And what people don't understand, we do because we live here, is we have that here. Most people who are not from Farmington don't understand that we're kind of a, a bigger city in a, in a corner of a, of a very open state. Right. And so we have a very active hospital with very active patient care ongoing. It is a wonderful opportunity for residents and medical students and anybody in that continuum to learn about the care of patients. Um, and so that's going to be a big draw uh, for us uh, to get those those caregivers to come here, those physicians and physicians in residency. The, the last hospital I worked at in another town was much smaller than San Juan Regional Medical Center, and we had a 24, 
24 residents at a time, so um, eight per year at that hospital. Hmm. We're bigger than that. We have more patients and more opportunities to learn than even that small hospital did. So I, I think we will attract residents to want to come here and learn. What's the number that you're hoping to, uh, to see maybe as this it, gets up and running? Initially, we think we're going to just start with four residents and then evolve to six. Um, that's probably where we're going to go. Again, we don't have to declare that just yet. Mm -hmm. um, but we think that it'll definitely support that number of residents to come through our program. Um, part of it is making sure that we're doing everything right um, as we ramp up rather than uh, try to go big bang. Uh, out of right the out the gate, that, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and for your current physicians, I mean, do they then have an opportunity to uh, yeah. to teach these newbies that are uh, that are coming in, these fresh faced physicians that are ready to go and don't know what awaits them? Uh, absolutely, and you're right, they don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we all get our eyes opened at some time or another. I bet, yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, that has been one of the really exciting things, Scott, is that as we have. Uh, this has grown, and we were applying for the grant, and we were publicizing and talking about it with physicians. I have had physicians from almost every specialty in our hospital say they want to be part of it, that they want to teach, they want to bring the, the residents through their departments. And that's one of the things with primary care. Almost all primary care residencies, you get a broad exposures, exposure to various specialties. So family practice, especially you'll do a rotation on general surgery and you'll do a rotation in OBGYN and you'll do pediatrics and you'll do emergency medicine. And so it gives an opportunity for many of our physicians on staff to have that opportunity to interact. Nice. And I yeah. guess a good opportunity for these students too, right? To learn yes. about all these different specialties as, as well as they get into that field. Yeah, well, absolutely. Um, you know, it's kind of a colloquialism, but one of the things that we say about primary care, emergency medicine too, which is mine, is that I have an ocean of knowledge, but it's only ankle deep. And the point of being is I have to have a broad exposure to all kinds of things because you don't know necessarily what that next patient is going to bring with them when they come through the door. Right. Well, and that's the idea. And there might be multiple things that they bring with them, right? That <laughs> they you have do. To then send them to different specialists. Absolutely. To figure out exactly what the tr yeah. course of treatment would be. Yep. Uh, this is very exciting. My guest this morning, uh, Dr. Bob Underwood is here. He's the chief medical officer, of course, with San Juan Regional Medical Center. And we were talking about the brand new, just announced, um, uh, physician, primary care physician, pardon me, residency program at San Juan Regional Medical Center. This has not been done here before, it in is my not. understanding. That, that is correct. Uh, my understanding is before I got here, which is almost six years now, um, that they had looked at it a couple of times, but it never really got off the ground. And so, you know, our great opportunity is that we're getting this grant from HSD. Um, right. and, and it's specifically designed around primary care residency programs within the state of New Mexico. So right. it's working with HSD and the New Mexico Primary Care Training Consortium. It has an acronym, I have a hard time saying it, but they're the ones that I've been working with very, very closely to talk about, okay, what's the curriculum need to look like? What, what are the check boxes we need to have? And so they have been wonderful partners for us in development of this so far. Very exciting. Well, and again, the idea being to recruit the students who will come here, do their residency here, and hopefully yep. stay here, and then serve the community as a new primary care physician. Absolutely. And that's the idea. Now, yeah. prior to this, I guess, would most folks maybe go to UNM or where would the residency um, programs be? Um, and so the, the med schools that we will recruit from, the, usually you're recruiting a lot within your state. And so it'll be Burrell College, um, which is the um, osteopathic medical school in, and UNM. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll also reach out to other regional medical schools. Um, in fact, it'll probably be a nationwide outreach um, to see who would be interested in coming here and learning. Uh, within our community. Certainly no limitations, right? I mean, you would no. accept a, a physician yep. or a student from any from anywhere if they want to be here. That, that's, that is true. And you have room. Um, uh, it, within any uh, USMLE, um, so United States Medical Licensing Exam, and so U.S. schools mostly. Right. But there will still be opportunity even for foreign medical graduates to qualify to do a residency at our program as well. Got you. And yeah. so the timeline would be, again, as you ramp up this, this program. We're, then you... we're thinking two years, maybe three from now. And um, as I have spoken to the folks at the state, they be conservative about it and mm -hmm. try not to do more than we need to. 
Um, there's a whole uh, series, of course, of accreditations that we have to qualify for as well before we can start bringing residents in and remain qualified so that as our residents graduate, um, they've uh, graduated from a certified program and that they can get their uh, full medical license and residency or specialty uh, training certificates. Gotcha. So they need to be board certified when they finish our program. I see. And so yeah. three years is, uh, is, is kind of the conservative view of what you're looking at. Maybe right. To ramp up here. Yep. And as you said, this grant is re you apply Renewable every year? annually. Yes. And so what we'll do is we'll get the, uh, we have a, a work list that we're working through. And as we get towards the end of it, next spring, we'll reapply for the next year's grant, which will probably be more things that need to be done um, as we work closer and closer towards our actual launch date. Nice. So. And, and this is something new from the state, is it not? Or has this program been going on, these grants have been given out before? I, I have to say that this is, um, they have given some grants out before, but this is a newer program, uh, primarily uh, brought forward by the governor. Um, we had, it really is fortuitous, we had a, a strategic retreat last uh, fall, last late last summer, where it was our board of directors, physician leaders from the community, the leadership team of the hospital talk about what we wanted to do. And this was one of the things that came up. Fast forward, I'm at the New Mexico Medical Society meeting in Albuquerque and Dr. Scrace and some of the folks in his team get up and they talk about this new primary care training consortium grant that they're going to be bringing forward. So I approached them as soon as the meeting was over, say, this is, this is a direction we want to go. Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of taken its own wing since then. Interesting. Yeah. Very, very cool. Well, yeah. and, and I think that has been a conversation at the hospital level yeah. for a while to try to figure out how to, again, grow your own or how do we right. train our folks that maybe want to stay here right. and serve the community because we do see a shortage of um, primary care physicians. Yeah. And so uh, we, Every three years, uh, a not-for-profit organization like ours has to do a community needs assessment, and we just finished that. The number one need in our community is access to care. And so that, it, that was done after we were already on this plan, but it reinforces how important this is to do uh, within San Juan County. You know, there's tons of other benefits. Um, it'll bring in academics really uh, to the forefront of our organization. Um, I, when you need to teach something, I think you're at the top of your game anyway. So I think it's going to even drive the quality of care of our organization up even higher. Um, it will open practices within our community. It's going to be a financial benefit to the community as a whole. Uh, it creates jobs. Um, and, and when businesses look whether or not they want to move to a particular community, they look at what is the healthcare infrastructure in that community. Can they support your employees? And so all of those things are bolstered by having a residency program. Nice. Very yeah. good. And, and I guess, again, from the state to, to, to recognize, I guess, the problem of not having enough yes. primary care physicians in some of these rural, smaller communities, not necessarily rural, but right. we're certainly not as big as Albuquerque or, no. or, or Las Cruces, um, but to send money out in these grants, I imagine San Juan isn't the only hospital to benefit from this grant program. Uh, are there that others is, around the state? Uh, that is true. Uh, there are a couple of uh, other uh, programs that are being developed and maybe farther down the pathway okay. uh, than we are. Uh, Hispaniola, I think, is one of those. And we're learning from, that's the benefit, is we're learning from what they've done as right. well. It's like, okay, well, what, what were the roadblocks? What were the hurdles that you ran into so that we can make sure we've mitigated those impacts before they happen? Right. Yeah. Very, very exciting. Might we see a Samuel College Medical School? You know that, or leave a, that for the other uh, folks. Uh, that would be a dream. <laughs> it, uh, it, it would be a lot of fun, but yeah, we're probably not there yet. Okay, yeah. all right. Are there some opportunities maybe for the college to help in this regard? Do you think, or oh, is this more of a hospital-centric thing uh, um, program? There, there will be, and that's because, as you know, healthcare is a team sport. Um, yes, we may have the residents, and we may be training with the residents, but there are nurses, respiratory therapists, X-ray techs physical therapists, all of those other disciplines, and many of them are trained right here at San Juan College. True, yeah. very true. And so that will that will help for those yeah. careers in the future too, I imagine. If you've yes. got more physicians in the community, you need more of those folks. Absolutely, and, and, and if you train together, I think that you learn your discipline together, you respect each other, and you deliver care better uh, farther down the road. 
Very, very exciting. Yeah. And uh, and so what does this mean? Do you, this just means more work for you, uh, Dr. Underwood, or do you have some other folks you're going to be hiring to help out with some of this we, stuff? We will be. Um, mm-hmm. uh, currently it is, and, and, and that's okay. Uh, this is something that's really exciting. Uh, like we said at the beginning of the yes. program, it's, it's, it's something that is very promising for the future. Um, it's not trying to deal with a pandemic. It is really building something that's really going to be meaningful for our community, for our hospital, for our community of healthcare givers um, it, it, at San Juan Regional and all over the place. So that's a big benefit. That's why it's not, yes, it's work, but it's all fun to do. But we will be hiring. In fact, I'm in the process of uh, doing two uh, what we call purpose descriptions, job descriptions, um, that will be the initiation of the cadre that will be part of this program. Got gotcha. you. And it sounds like to me this has some regional impacts as well. I mean, you certainly hope some of these folks would stay in, in Farmington, but I imagine some of the other regional hospitals might see the benefits as well. Oh, absolutely. Um, absolutely, that will be true. And uh, like I said, um, some of them will stay uh, right here in our own community, but some of them will venture out. And then Another benefit is as they go to other communities, they improve the health in those communities, whether it's Cortez, Shiprock, or something else within our region. But it may be that they go back to another academic institution, and then they can be promoting, you know, where I did my residency? I did it in Farmington, New Mexico, and this is a community you need to check out. There you go. Yeah. And you mentioned and you mentioned all the different types of experiences that these students would have yeah. here because it's somewhat of a unique medical hub, if you will, it is. for the residents who live in the entire region. And we've seen that, that folks will travel here for specialized care. Right. They don't have to go further to Albuquerque or Denver for those types of things. And that's being offered here. And that gives those students, I guess, exposure to some of these procedures. Uh, absolutely, it does. And and that was over the, the five years that I've been here, as we can expand anything that we can provide to our local population. That's exactly what it does. It keeps them from having to go to Albuquerque, sometimes Phoenix, um, even as far away as Salt Lake or Denver to get care. If we can, if we can provide that here, and you know, impact uh, the, uh, the the fact that they don't have to be separated from family and away from their home to get that kind of care. You know, when you're in the process of getting major medical care, it's stressful. It's stressful to families. And so if you can do that at home, all the better. Long ranging impacts from what we're talking about here this morning is what I'm hearing. Yes, uh, it, it, it will be big. Uh, and and that's why we're so excited about it. It, it sounds like, okay, so we're going to have a couple of new doctors every year, but the the ripple effect that it will have on our community is going to be huge. Right. And And would it be, I guess, once it's up and running, not too difficult to expand it if you're getting a lot of demand, a lot of interest from students and things like that once you have all those core things in place? Uh, so yes, that will be an opportunity as well. Um, it's really interesting. There's a lot of uh, federal guidelines that limit how much you can do and how fast that you can do it, but yes, we will. Um, and it, I'm sure it'll be cost money. Uh, it, they do, but it's an investment and you right. know, th- that is very, very important. Um, but it might start off with a couple of residents, expand that program, and then we'll look and see, are there opportunities to move into any other spe- specialties and specialty training, whether it be emergency medicine, surgery, uh, those types of things. Gotcha. Cardiology, uh, I guess, or things like that, so, or not well, so much? So cardiology is actually not a residency. It's a fellowship. So uh-huh. you have to – remember I talked through the plan? This is you why know, I'm not a doctor. Yeah. See? So uh, in order to do cardiology, you have to do a three-year residency program and then apply for a fellowship of another couple of years in order to be gotcha. a cardiologist. And the length of that depends on what kind of cardiology you're going to be okay yeah so it, it's pretty in-depth right yes understood but is that something i guess that the hospital could also offer then down the road that sure. once they're done with the residency there could be a fellowship here in um, some of these things yes it would be a possibility down the road again i look at places where i worked that were about the same size or maybe even smaller um, and there was an intensive care fellowship um, in the sister hospital in the town that i used to work in okay and it was not as big as we are Gotcha. So this opens a lot of doors, I guess, is what I'm hearing, yeah. um, depending on how things grow. Yes, absolutely. And, and I, it, the other, uh, we're recruiting physicians all the time Yes. Um, to come into our community, depending on what our needs are. Um, this is something else that as we're recruiting physicians, we can say, 
we've got a residency program and it will attract a different cadre of physicians who want to come and who want to teach. They'll bring with them their own expertise in those various areas and then that expands um, once they're here. Nice. And so I know that's an ongoing challenge for not just San Juan Regional but other hospitals as well to, to recruit um, quality doctors, physicians, specialists to the to the area when you have an opening. Yeah, absolutely it is. Um, recruiting is is a big piece of what we have to do. Um, and we want to bring in great doctors to take care of our community. And some specialties more difficult to recruit than others, and it, it changes from time to time. Um, but this will give us, uh, as we said earlier, primary care is one of those that's very difficult to recruit. And so bringing them in, it'll, it'll open that uh, so that we have a greater ability to recruit and, and give offerings. You know, some physicians, um, wherever they're working or when they are coming out of their training, they have an inclination to teach. And if we don't even have that as an opportunity here, um, we're not going to attract that candidate. So this expands our offering for a, a number of different candidates to come here and, and want to work in our community. Right. And hopefully yeah. stay. And stay. Right. Yes. Very good. Win, win, win. Yes, I, I, I really do. You know, there's not very many things that you work on that you just keep seeing the positives uh, about it. And honestly, the residency program and to be able to develop that, I, I really, that's all I see when I look at it. Very exciting. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that with us this morning. Dr. Yeah. Underwood, we're Glad really to be excited to, uh, to be able to share this with the community, with our audiences. Right. I know um, like it's a long range look, but five years from now, We'll, we'll have you'll be up and running we hope we'll, we will be up and running either in five years we will have either graduated our first class or they will be in their very last year of training okay yeah can't wait yeah we'll see very good sir yeah. thank you for being here thanks scott i appreciate it you bet yeah always appreciate talking with you dr bob underwood from salmon regional medical center um, my guest here this morning on our solutions from the street program here on ksj and megan's gonna be so mad that she missed this opportunity to talk to you about <laughs> this stuff so <laughs> We'll have her take that, but let me just wrap up the show really quick here and remind everybody that, of course, we will be back next week with our That's Interesting program. So if you remember the, the Fridays of the month, we are on Solutions from the Street every second and fourth Friday. Gosh, next Friday is going to be the first Friday of August. So we go back to That's Interesting. That's our open line show. That's when we invite you to just call in and uh, give us a call and share whatever is interesting in your world. It could be hot weather. It could be what pool you like, whatever it might be. Uh, or Connie Mack, who knows what we'll be talking about next Friday. But we want you to join us and share it with us here on KSJE next Friday at 8 o'clock for our That's Interesting program. And we hope that you will do that. Until then, though, I'm Scott Micklin. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget, of course, our Connie Mack World Series coverage continues today. We've got three games on tap. First one beginning at 1 o'clock, 5.15, 7.30. That might be the championship game, depending on how things go today. We've seen some great, great basketball and heard great basketball coverage on the radio. So we hope you'll take us with you if you do go to the park. Or if you can't make it, just go to ksje.com or 90.9 and tune in and enjoy the World Series. I'm Scott Micklin. Have a great weekend. Stay safe and cool. I'll see you next week right here on KSJE. Did you enjoy that podcast? We hope that you did. And if you did, share it with your friends. And if you really want to keep podcasts like this coming, please support KSJE. You can do it easily online at ksje.com.